Hello and welcome to the Cheshire Community Homes webinar on an introduction to community-led housing. I'm John Hesselwood, the Community Housing Development Manager. Uh, I work for Cheshire Community Action. Uh, we're a community development charity that works across the whole of Cheshire and Warrington. Um, and today's uh, webinar has been jointly organised between Cheshire West Voluntary Action uh, and ourselves at Cheshire Community Action. So really the aims of this session uh, is to help you understand what is community-led housing, uh, its history, um, and a bit about the different approaches to it. I'm also going to share examples of community-led housing projects, uh, including a local example based in Cheshire, uh, and let you know a little bit about the support that's available and how you might want to get involved if it's something that interests you. So what is community-led housing? Well, it's really where people and communities play a leading and lasting role in addressing their own housing needs. And you can see an example there uh, from the Yulegrave Community Land Trust, which is based in Derbyshire, just over the border from Cheshire. That's when they got spades in the ground. Now, the more official definition uh, is based on core principles rather than hard and fast rules. So all community-led housing projects need to have some form of meaningful community engagement and consent, uh, which occurs throughout the process. Uh, although the community doesn't necessarily have to initiate and manage the development process or build the homes themselves, though some may do. And the local community group or organization uh, has to own, manage or steward the homes in a man manner of their choosing and the benefits to the local area or the specified community must be clearly defined and legally protected in perpetuity. So it might be a geographical area, a village, a neighbourhood or a town uh, that needs affordable housing, for example, or there might be a specified intentional community of people that have specific housing needs. And, and the main thing is that those uh, needs and benefits have to be legally protected in perpetuity. So what are the benefits of community-led housing? Well, most uh, projects that we see across the country provide some form of affordable housing that people can actually afford at a local level, um, and that's uh, protected in perpetuity. We often find that, that community-led housing schemes um, bring forward different innovative uh, types of designs uh, using modern building techniques. Um, many of them uh, have built very energy efficient homes with lower running costs for end users. And the process itself help, helps build up skills within people and communities uh, and enables much more local uh, democratic power and control uh, over development, which, which is, a, is a huge uh, benefit to, to this process. Uh, community housing projects also make really good use of local sites, particularly small sites that the sector is renowned for. So, for example, many community land trusts have developed on small brownfield sites, for example, uh, garage sites. And we also see uh, more sustainable and, and environmentally sensitive uh, designs and layouts, uh, which take into account the local landscape and biodiversity. The, one of the other major advantages is that when housing uh, is rooted in the local community uh, and governed by the local community, we, we see much higher approval rates, so much more local support for developments um, in, in the community-led housing sector. And co-housing, for example, um, there's some great examples of uh, community, communal spaces and facilities that can also reduce social isolation. Uh, create healthier, more connected communities. Other than housing, there's, there's the opportunity to develop different types of community assets from workspaces, uh, shops, pubs, cafes, food gardens, orchards, you name it. There's all kinds of examples uh, of, of other uh, land uses and assets that have been developed uh, alongside community-led housing projects. And also, um, they help to boost local economies by supporting local supply chains, uh, enabling communities to afford to live in their area, helps keep local businesses and services viable as well. 
So a little bit of the history uh, of community-led housing. Um, the map here with all the dots on it shows you where there's existing community-led housing schemes. Uh, and there's quite a rich diversity, as you can see. So it has quite a long history, really. Uh, but it's not a new idea. Uh, it's quite a well-established sector. Um, and I'm just going to take you through um, some uh, some of the more sort of recent history and recent decades of how it's how the sector's changed. So uh, this chart here shows um, how housing cooperatives have grown uh, since 1975 up to 2016. So back in the uh, 70s and 80s, a lot of housing cooperatives were established uh, mainly in the metropolitan areas of uh, places like London, Birmingham, uh, Liverpool and Manchester, but also in, in all parts of the country. Um, and moving on to uh, the 1990s, we saw a, a huge growth in uh, tenant management organisations. And these are uh, tend to be groups of uh, tenants, uh, council housing or housing association tenants uh, that take over uh, the running of their homes. And then in more recent years, we've seen a huge growth of community land trusts, particularly in the last decade, uh, has been a very popular uh, approach to community-led housing. So it's a, a well-established sector and it's still very much a growing sector um, with nearly 90,000 people, members of community-led housing organisations. As I've mentioned, uh, CLTs have seen a huge growth in recent years. And there's actually over 21,000 uh, community-led homes in the pipeline to be built. So huge potential uh, to keep on growing over the next few years. The graphics there at the bottom show the value for money for the sector. So capital economics were commissioned by the CLT network last year in 2020 uh, to look at how much uh, bang for the book uh, the sector delivers. So what, every one pound uh, of taxpayers' money, uh, £2.70 uh, is returned over a 10-year period, and that figure continues to increase over time. Uh, and that's the case that's been put to uh, national government, uh, particularly to help uh, reopen the community housing fund. So this uh, slide shows you the uh, support infrastructure um, around the sector. So on the left hand side there, you can see the main uh, structural uh, funders to the sector. So uh, the government department, Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, um, they've invested uh, so far since 2016, around 300 million uh, into the sector, which has developed this sort of ecosystem uh, of support uh, to enable the growth of, of the sector. Uh, Homes England uh, is the, the government agency, uh, the funder of affordable housing effectively, um, and they've administered the community housing fund. Uh, Power to Change, uh, which is a large endowment fund, uh, have made huge investments uh, into the sector, uh, as well as the uh, Nationwide Foundation. Uh, this part of the diagram where I've got my cursor here, uh, you can see the four national trade bodies, uh, the UK Co-Housing uh, Network, the National CLT Network, the Confederation of Cooperative Housing, and locality, all joined forces to form the National Support Alliance or Support Partnership. And they've pooled their resources um, into one place, uh, which is the National Advice Portal, uh, which is communitylledhomes.org.uk. And in terms of where we fit in, so Cheshire Community Homes, the service uh, hosted by Cheshire Community Action, is one of the regional advice hubs uh, we cover Cheshire and Warrington, but we're part of a national network um, of advice hubs uh, that cover the whole of England and Wales. Uh, and we're really the local arm of the community-led homes uh, support partnership. And working with and for the hubs, uh, we've got technical advisors, uh, which will have gone through the community-led housing uh, accredited training. Um, so there's a, a growing number of technical advisors now across the country. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit now about uh, the different types of community-led housing, uh, starting with housing cooperatives. So um, housing cooperatives, um, there are two main types really, the ownership or mutual uh, cooperative, where you find that members buy into the cooperative itself and, and they own a share of the actual building that they live in. And then there's non-ownership or non-mutual cooperatives. This is where people become members by taking up a tenancy with the cooperative, giving them control over their housing without actually owning it personally. So it's the cooperative that owns the asset in that situation, not the individual. Uh, and the picture there, you can see an example from the Iroco Housing Cooperative uh, in Coin Street in London. So I've said that community land trusts uh, have become uh, a very popular approach uh, to community-led housing. And these are community organisations set up to develop and manage homes and other uh, local community assets, which could be uh, community enterprises, food gardens, workspaces, etc. Uh, and they tend to cover a geographical area. That could be a village, a neighbourhood or a town. And that organisation acts as the long term stewards of the homes and the assets to ensure that they do remain affordable in perpetuity. And the example there is from Powerstock and District Community Land Trust in Dorset. So co-housing um, is, is very much a philosophy, a philosophy on a way of living uh, as it is an approach uh, to community led housing projects. And this is where each household has its own private space, uh, as well as a shared community spaces, often a common house or an open space or shared facilities, which are collectively managed by residents. And you can see a photograph there of Lilac in Leeds, which stands for Low Impact Living Affordable Community, which is a great example of a co-housing scheme. I mentioned tenant management organisations. Uh, again, these are uh, resident tenants of council housing or housing association homes, uh, which take over responsibility for the running of their homes. Uh, and the picture there is from the group uh, in Suffolk TMO in Hackney in London. Self-build, many of us will have heard of through grand designs, uh, but self-build, it's, it's not all about uh, grand designs as such. Um, so uh, this is an example from the yard in Ashley Vale in Bristol. Uh, this is about creating individual homes for yourself. Uh, that might be ranging from act, doing the actual building and construction work yourself or contracting uh, that work out to an architect or a building firm, or it might be uh, a mix of the two. Uh, Self-finish is another form of that, uh, where effectively uh, occupants can go and finish off a home uh, from a shell. Uh, and there's, there's quite a few examples of that now growing in the sector as well. Uh, sometimes self-builders get together uh, to form a group where they can collaborate to build homes, uh, together in order to reduce costs, uh, share the skills uh, and also help the collective uh, management of the project and, and collaborating on the construction process. Uh, and that particular example there is from uh, Broad Hempstead Community Land Trust uh, in rural Devon. Finally, uh, self-help housing. It sounds a bit like self-build, but it's different uh, because self-help housing involves groups of local people bringing back into use empty properties uh, that tend to be in limbo or awaiting decisions about their future use or redevelopment. This is different from self-build, uh, the latter being um, uh, involving construct constructing permanent homes uh, from scratch, whereas self-help is, is really, really about uh, redeveloping uh, existing housing. And that example uh, photograph there is from the Canopy Housing Project in Leeds, where they worked with uh, local homeless people uh, to work on the construction projects. So moving on to uh, the broad stages of the community-led housing process. So, uh, this diagram here 
um, you can see all the different stages uh, from group, site, plan, build and live. Um, in the circles there, um, from site, plan, build and live, um, this is a deliberately um, squiggly line. It's a non-linear process because um, community-led housing can start in many different ways. Um, so it may start with a group of people with an idea of, of how to house themselves. Um, that might be uh, for a cooperative or a co-housing scheme. It might be that it starts with a site opportunity um, to explore um, a, a different type of housing development, whether that's um, a brownfield site uh, for a new build uh, or a greenfield site for a new build. It could be an existing uh, building or existing properties to be brought back into use, or it could be part of a larger development site. So it could be that some of the affordable housing on a large site could be developed with using a community-led approach. All community-led housing projects will need to go for a rigorous planning process. Um, initially to plan the early actions of the project, um, also to uh, do the financial planning and the business planning process to make sure that the uh, various grant funding and finance options are in place, and also to achieve planning permission. So there's likely to be lots of different plans involved with community-led housing projects. Moving on to the build stage, Again, lots of different build options from self-finish, self-build, group self-build, right through to um, working with housing associations uh, and other development partners, lots of different build options. Uh, it, it might not be a new build, as I've said, it might be um, uh, redeveloping existing properties. And then all community-led housing schemes will have to give some thought to uh, the live stage. So that's when the occupants move in uh, and that, that can include things like uh, what the tenure, what the rent levels, how will rents be collected, how will the assets be managed in the long term, all those things need to be thought about. Uh, what we can say uh, is that all housing developments of all forms will involve site plan, build and live. But what makes community-led housing different is this bit here. It's the group, it's the community, it's the people. Whether that's a geographical community, a specific group of people, um, that's what makes it different. And their involvement throughout all these stages of the process is really what defines uh, community-led housing. Uh, the link at the bottom here, um, is worth a look. That describes some of these stages uh, in a bit more detail um, and in terms of what groups need to think about uh, each of those stages. So please do go and have a look at that. So we've got an example here from Cheshire. So I'm delighted to say that we've got our first scheme to planning in Cheshire. So the Tatton Hall Community Land Trust will be Cheshire's first uh, community-led housing project that has reached uh, planning approval. So um, this has been <clears throat> a long time in the making, uh, but just to tell you a little bit about the story. Uh, so first of all, this scheme uh, is proposed to be four uh, one-bedroom uh, social rent units. Uh, you can see one of them there on the photograph, which is one of the bungalows, uh, which is on uh, this side of the road uh, and so it's a it's a bit of an awkward site split onto two sides of the road uh, and there will be three more units on this side which will be two uh, one bed houses and one one bed bungalow so um a little bit of uh, the backstory to this so back in 2016 uh, sanctuary housing association um looked at this site and uh, decided that it wasn't viable uh, for them to develop it themselves for affordable housing. So what they did was approach the parish council uh, to ask them if they'd like to explore the development of a community land trust, uh, which they were, were happy to do. Uh, and, and what we did was set up a community drop-in event. We invited people uh, to find out about community land trusts 
um, and told them a lot about it. Uh, had lots of uh, interesting discussions and by the end of that event uh, we had almost a hundred uh, local community members uh, signed up to to the community land trust from there um, those members uh, formed a steering group um, which went on to register as a community land trust uh, that was a, a legal um, registration with the Financial Conduct Authority, so it registered as a community benefit society using the uh, model rules from the National Community Land Trust Network. It also received some funding from Cheshire West and Chester Council uh, to help it uh, get set up in those early stages. And we also did a very detailed uh, housing needs survey uh, to look at what the needs were in the local community. Uh, that was run by ourselves at um, Cheshire Community Action. Um, and that was commissioned by the housing policy team at Cheshire West and Chester Council. And what we found in that survey was that there was a chronic lack of smaller one bedroom units for rent, particularly for younger people in the village. So there's a lot of businesses and services in Tatton Hall, but we found that it was very difficult uh, for local young people to stay in the village uh, or um, to live near where they work and near their families. So um, they also went on to apply for uh, money from the Community Housing Fund by Homes England and that was funding to appoint their solicitors for the land transfer from Sanctuary uh, and also uh, MWD architects to de design the scheme and also to submit the planning application. So we're, we're, we're absolutely delighted that this is our first scheme uh, that's got through to planning. The next stage really of the project now is to find an appropriate development partner, possibly a housing association uh, that can develop the scheme uh, and also uh, manage the scheme uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, but the site itself will remain in community ownership. Okay, so in terms of the support uh, across Cheshire and Warrington, I'm just gonna start with Cheshire West and Chester where we, we've, probably got the most developed offer um, and, and, and got our first scheme uh, off the ground. So there's a number of things that the local authority uh, can help with and, and we've been working jointly with them to assess housing needs uh, so we can do household uh, surveys uh, and also look at secondary data to assess needs. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, support around neighbourhood planning if, if that's a route uh, for your community to community-led housing. Uh, that's through the planning policy team at Cheshire West and Chester Council. Uh, the council's also uh, committed to looking at sites that it owns to see whether that any of those uh, would have potential for community-led development. Um, and, and that's also in response to groups that might come forward looking for sites. Um, where schemes um, are meeting demand from the housing register, there is potential for, for them to get some startup funding from the local authority uh, to help form the group, get it set up uh, and get it le legally registered. Uh, also, uh, there, there is a commitment from the authority uh, where there are funds available uh, from developments uh, to provide uh, section 106 commuted sums. Um, which can go towards the capital cost of community-led housing projects. So that's £25,000 or up to £25,000 per unit. But like I say, this is subject to uh, other developments. So this is funding uh, that's brought in uh, as a contribution from, from other housing developments in the area. Uh, we're also uh, in conversations with the authority about the self-build register or the self and custom build register. Uh, and this is uh, the register for people uh, that are maybe looking for plots uh, across the patch uh, to do their own self-build projects. Uh, and, and we're looking into facilitating groups working together or, or individual self-builders coming together as groups uh, to see if we can get any projects going in that way. Uh, there's also a commitment from the planners at Cheshire West to help community-led housing schemes coming through uh, to give you help with your planning applications. 
Um, and there's also quite a supportive planning policy environment. Uh, Community-led housing is mentioned in the local plan. Um, and, and so we've got quite a supportive um, set of planning policies there uh, to help enable uh, community-led housing. And there's, there's also um, support uh, and guidance available from the housing policy team uh, at Cheshire, Cheshire West as well. So at Cheshire Community Homes, so we stretch across the whole uh, of Cheshire and Warrington, uh, including Cheshire East uh, and Warrington um, for a council area as well. So what can we do to help um, across the whole patch? Well, if you've got ideas uh, or you want to learn from other projects, come and speak to us. Um, we can help you develop your ideas or connect you uh, with, with other projects. Uh, so that you can speak to them. Uh, we can help you engage with the wider community to see what the appetite is or, or whether you need to figure out what the needs are. Uh, and we can also help you form a functioning group uh, and help with that, that group development process uh, to make sure it's fit for purpose. Uh, if you need to find and apply for funding, that's also something we can help with. Um, there's really lots of options depending on where you're based. Uh, whether it's startup funding or for legal uh, registration of legal structures, um, right through to um, uh, developing the finance uh, for your project. We can also help you register the right legal structure so we, we can um, have a discussion with you. Uh, depending on what it is you actually want to achieve, uh, different legal structures will suit. <clears throat> but that's a service we can also provide. I've mentioned housing needs surveys and assessments. That is a technical service uh, that we can provide <clears throat> to parish councils, communities and community organisations. And we've also supported uh, nearly 70 communities across Cheshire and Warrington to produce neighbourhood plans. And this is where communities have the right to set their own planning policy. It has to be in general conformity with national uh, uh, and local uh, planning policy as well. Uh, but this is often uh, a way, uh, uh, you know, this is a route into community-led housing as well. So we can, we can give advice on that. Um, <clears throat> if you've got a site opportunity that's come forward, uh, we can help you look into that and see whether that site's actually feasible, particularly in, in planning policy terms. And we can also help you find the right people in the local authority, depending on what, it, what type of support you need and help you with liaise with local authority officers and members. If you need to plan your project, whether that's sort of simple early action planning uh, to get started or more uh, detailed business planning later on, uh, that's something that we can help with. And also finding the right technical professionals, whether that's solicitors that will understand this sector and what, what you're trying to do, um, or it could be architects, surveyors or planning consultants. And also we, we want to help groups find suitable development partners, whether that's setting up a partnership with a housing association to build and manage your scheme. Um, that's the sort of thing that we can facilitate that process uh, and handhold communities through that process. And we'll also be providing updates on funding, resources and support available and key changes to the sector. So that's really our offer at the moment at Cheshire Community, Community Homes, uh, but we will always be uh, developing our services uh, where we can to meet those needs. So how can you get involved? Well, I always say it's worth uh, looking at other projects and looking at other case studies um, for inspiration, for ideas. Um, you know, there's so many different and diverse examples out there. Whatever you, you've come up with, the likelihood is and someone else has, has tried it somewhere else and kind of gone through um, all the pain and the pitfalls and, 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 you know, things that we can learn from. So there's a few links there that uh, a few sources of information if, if you want to look at the projects. So our website has some case studies there with the link at the top. There's also uh, the National Community-Led Homes website uh, with, with a 
few case studies and their YouTube page. And then there's the trade bodies like the Confederation of Cooperative Housing, the National CLT Network and the UK Co-Housing Network uh, have got their libraries of case studies as well. So where do you start with all this? Well, get in touch with me either via email uh, or phone there. You, you feel free to get in touch with me anytime. More than happy uh, to speak with you about your ideas. Perhaps there's a site that's come up. Um, have you checked whether that site is actually feasible in planning policy terms? And do you understand those needs, those housing needs, those local community needs, or the needs of the specific group of people uh, that, that you want to help. Um, is there already a neighbourhood planning force? Is there one in development or is there one up for review soon? That's worth looking at, particularly in the area that you're looking at developing. Uh, there may be larger sites uh, that are coming through the pipeline in your community um, that you know of that, that you want to have some influence over to see if that can include a community-led element. Maybe the community could develop its own affordable housing on that site, for example. Maybe it could take part of the site or take on completed units on that site. There's lots of different ways uh, of looking at it. Um, is there a group of interested people uh, that want to house themselves? Um, and perhaps they want to look at a values way, uh, values based way of living, for example, co-housing where they want to share spaces and facilities. The key really at this stage, if you're right at the beginning of a project or an idea, is really think why you're doing it. You know, why, why and why again, I always say, uh, before you embark on a community-led housing project. So that's all I've got to share for today. I hope that's been useful. Uh, please get in touch uh, if you want to get any advice, support, or if you just want to run your ideas past us. And thank you for listening.